My name is Wasi Lawal. I'm a graduate student in Earth and Environmental Sciences. And you might be wondering why a science student is starting his presentation with music. My research has to do with developing technologies for water treatment. The song that I just played is titled Water No Get Enemy or Water Has No Enemies. So there's obviously a point of interest there. Um, but really, um, my fascination with the song comes from the writer and the performer of the song. Um, Fela Nicolak Bokuti, who happens to be one of my favorite um, artists. But my, um, what has intrigued me about him is not really about his music. His music is nice. Um, but um, more about um, his activities as a human rights activist. He's someone who, um, in his songs, is always thinking about corruption, ills in government, um, oppression, government oppression, police brutality, and all those kinds of things. And even though he knows that, even though he knew when he was alive that they would come and arrest him, as soon as he got out of prison, he would go back into the studio and sing something else again. And that's what really intrigued me about him. Now, this particular song happens to be one of his softer songs, which leads you to think, why is the human rights activist singing about water? Well, that's probably because um, the United Nations, finally, in 2008, um, had passed a resolution um, declaring that water is a fundamental human right. The irony about that is that the same organization, two of its agencies, have report, has reported that 740, uh, 748 million people in the world lack access to clean water. That's at least 10% of the world population that have no access to a basic human right. Uh, when we say a lot of people don't have access to clean water, um, it's important to explain things a little bit better. Now, here in Texas, um, we have some kind of water scarcity, but the scarcity is more of physical in terms of the fact that um, the supply for water is a little bit stressed compared to the demand. In these areas, this kind of scarcity that they have is something we call economic scarcity, which means that there are not enough in the infrastructure to provide or to, um, to um, feed this um, demand for water is just not there. Now, here in the United States, how do we get our water? Our water is, um, our need for water is fed by what, um, what we call water treatment plants and wood water treatment plants. The water treatment plants draw water from rivers, lakes, or underground, they treat them and send them to our homes. When we are done with the water, the sewage goes back through pipes to wastewater treatment plants where the water is cleaned and discharged into lakes or rivers. This is a picture I took at, two, uh, at one of those um, water, wastewater treatment plants a couple of years ago. This one's actually in Arlington. Now, According to a magazine called Chemical and Engineering News, water treatment plants, uh, the United States spends $29 billion each year on maintaining water treatment plants such as the one that I showed up there. $29 billion. That's more than the gross domestic product of 38 out of 54 African countries. Furthermore, these countries have people where two-thirds of the people that, have, that lack access to clean water are people who live on less than $2 a day. This paints a clear picture that if we are going to try and solve the water issue in these countries, conventional water treatment utilities like what we have here in the U.S. will not work because they just can't afford them. So if that's the case, then what's the solution? 
Well, I'll talk about the, what we could do to solve this problem in a minute, but um, one way of looking at it, if you're trying to look at a solution to this problem, one way in which we can look at it is by looking at it that not as just an economic issue, but also as a human rights issue. And when we have a human rights issue, this means that everybody needs to join hands and work together so that we can find it, figure out the solution. Now, some learned societies, such as the Royal Society of Chemistry and the American Chemical Society, have come up with a bunch of ideas which they think, um, if put together, can um, form solutions to this problem. I, in my wisdom, have um, narrowed it down to three things, which are called three Ts, technology, technicians, and tools. One thing that is clear is that if we're going to try and solve this issue, we can't rely on the same conventional systems that we have. It's going to be new ideas, right? So um, basically, we're going to need low-cost technologies that can easily be deployed, but also come at a low cost, or that are not very expensive. Some ideas that come to mind are portable filtration and disinfection units, or um, rainwater collection systems. These are just a few ideas. There are many other ideas out there. The problem is the fact that these things are just ideas, or at early stages of development. There still needs to be a lot of research to be done to get these things to the point where they can, they can be deployed and actually provide water to people. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these countries are poor countries that can't afford basic infrastructure. So obviously, you would expect that they will not be able to afford to do research. And that's where wealthy countries like the United States come in. Funding needs to be provided to help with research in these areas, and universities, government agencies need to step in, as well as corporations as well. So that's, the, that's regarding technology. In terms of tools, uh, in terms of technicians, any working sector in any functional economy needs skilled people to drive that sector. Now, again, um, you would imagine that some of these countries don't have the research capabilities or don't have the um, academic capabilities to train the workers that they need to drive this sector, the water sector in their, in their countries. So it would help if we can offer scholarships, fellowships, travel grants, exchange programs to some of these people so that they can come here, study, gain some important, helpful skills that, that they can take back to their countries and, be, and, and function in their, in their water sector, as well as um, f contribute actively to policy making. Tools. Even if you had people and you had the research, you still need tools that they need to use. Some of these tools could range from tanks, mixers, pumps, to lab equipment for monitoring and quality control. Now, we can help with this by either providing loans to help purchase some of these things, or an example is um, this university has an arrangement with a large um, equipment manufacturer where the manufacturer has provided instruments in a research center here where students can go in and perform research and also, and, and also um, do the academic work. We need those kind of arrangements back there as well, so that people can, so that um, some of these skilled workers can use those equipments to help serve their water sector as well. Now, and it doesn't even have to be that large scale. Individual universities or utilities can also donate some of their old used equipment, which is still in good working order, but which they're about to replace. You can also do donate them to those areas so that they can, which they would really appreciate, they can use them to serve their sectors so the point where they, get to the, um, where, where they get to the level where those sectors are beginning to function properly and are self-sustaining. Now, in conclusion, one thing I would like to say is, if we're able to solve this water problem, you would imagine that that would improve health. When health improves, that improves productivity. When productivity improves, you would think that that would reduce poverty. And when poverty reduces, that opens the door to a lot of things. Well, for one, 
that would reduce the reliance on continuous aid. And secondly, it will also help to reduce some of the emerging problems that we are seeing today, including terrorism. Now, back to the crux of my presentation. Again, this is a human rights issue. And as Fela said in another one of his songs, human rights belong to everybody. Thank you very much.